today we are going to study transport processes along the nephron first i will be drawing a tubular epithelial cell an epithelial cell which lines all along the tubule these sort of epithelial cells line all along the tubule so this is a tubular epithelial cell it has an apical membrane please remember apical membrane means the membrane facing the lumen facing the lumen of the tubule of the nephron and a basolateral membrane which is facing the blood basolateral membrane facing the blood with blood i mean peritubular capillary blood which emerges from the efferent arteriole peritubular capillary blood which emerges from the efferent arteriole now the first step peritubular capillary blood which emerges from the efferent arteriole this blue arrow shows fluid flowing in the lumen of the tubule fluid flowing in the lumen of the tubule The first step is the operation of the basolateral sodium potassium ATPase pump. Sodium potassium ATPase pump. It pumps out three sodium ions and pumps in two potassium ions into the cell. This is primary active transport. Primary active because ionic pumps ATP is used during the process of transport itself. This lowers the sodium concentration inside the cell. The second event occurs along the apical membrane, the membrane facing the lumen. As sodium is transported downhill along the cell, glucose is transported against its concentration gradient. This is core transport because both are transported in the same direction. This is mediated by the sodium glucose core transporter. Sodium glucose core transporter or SGLT. Then as sodium is transported downhill along its concentration gradient, hydrogen is transported uphill into the lumen. That is, it is secreted into the lumen. This is counter transport. Both are transported in the opposite direction. And this is secondary active transport. Secondary active because Energy is derived from ionic concentration gradients created by primary active transport in the first place. By ionic concentration gradients created by primary active transport. Through integral membrane proteins, there is facilitated diffusion also of a number of substances like potassium, glucose. So this is facilitated diffusion. That is diffusion mediated by a carrier and through integral membrane proteins and this is facilitated diffusion now how does water move water moves through special water channels called aquaporins which were discovered by dr peter agre and they are on both the apical and the basolateral membrane and this is osmosis of water to the transcellular root so through aquaporins, there is osmosis of water to the transcellular root. Now there is paracellular movement of water through leaky tight junctions. That is that is also osmosis. Paracellular movement of water through leaky tight junctions. And finally, in this water, solvent is also moved that through the leaky tight junctions, this is solvent drag. 
So to summarize, this is primary active transport mediated by the sodium potassium ATPs pump, secondary active transport by sodium glucose co-transport and sodium hydrogen antipoto facilitated diffusion through integral membrane proteins and osmosis of water through aquaporins and through paracellular root and solvent tank. Thank you. I am Dr. Swapnil.